Let's go to D.C. now, where there seems to be a new focus from the Republicans actually trying to win elections here. Now, take a look at some headlines just from the past week here. All signs that point to the GOP giving up any fight when it comes to raising the debt limit. Even Michelle Bachman, Michelle Bachman, that's right, Queen of Crazy Town, says that now the wrong time to fight that fight. The GOP also bit their lips and helped pass the farm bill last week. That is the bill, yes, that's right here, that includes food stamps. Yes, there's a cut in food stamps. We're talking 1%. That's a fraction of what Republicans said they wanted cut from the program. And then... There's immigration. At his weekly press conference, House Speaker John Boehner said he doesn't think immigration reform can pass this year, and he tries to throw the blame at, you guessed it, the White House. But most Republicans just don't want the fight this year, even though they say, hey, you know what, overall, we've got to bring more people into uh, the big tent here or a tent for the Republican Party. They say this year, this year is where we need consensus. So the push now is to keep the party together and score wins in the November midterms. And most Republican anal analysts say that their party in the electoral driver's seat this fall, given the hits the president and Democrats have taken since Obamacare rolled out. But there could be a danger in the wait till November strategy. Democratic House Leader Nancy Pelosi, she hit on it today, saying we're supposed to legislate, and if we don't, why don't we just pack up and go home. So the question is, can this GOP tactic of elections first, legislation second actually work, or will Pelosi's charge of obstructionism stick? And for that, let's bring in our panel here tonight, Jeannie Zaino, the brains of the outfit, professor of political <laughs> science at Arizona <laughs> College, yes, and professor of campaign management at NYU, Dominic Carter, of course, political journalist, author, and so much more, and Andrew Whitman, senior political correspondent and explaining cuts. Um, uh, not those guys. All right, let's, let's get to it. It's the, uh, we were talking this morning, and Andrew's analogy of the four corners def uh, defense and basketball, or prevent defense um, when it comes to uh, football here, sometimes that's just the right recipe to lose. Is it too early for them to say, basically, we're done here. Um, let's just talk health care to November. I don't, I don't know what those sports analogies mean, by the way. So I'm going to leave that to you guys. But <laughs> let, me, <laughs> running running out the let me just say that I think that from a strategic perspective, they are making the right decision for mm -hmm. potentially winning the Senate. But where they are making a wrong decision is for potentially winning in 2016. So on immigration in particular, this is a big problem for the GOP 2016. But they are, of course, betting that if they take the Senate and they can push through some immigration reform that's more to their liking, they may have a shot at 2016. I mean, they lost Hispanics by 44% in 2012. <coughs> so that's a big concern for them. But absolutely, in terms of Congress, they are making the right decision in terms of you know holding the House and winning the Senate. Uh, is it good for the country? You know, I, that's... I politely disagree with the professor. Yes, very, let's do very, that very politely. Very politely. Very <laughs> professor, I disagree. Here's why. In October, all we were doing is talking about how Republicans have absolutely lost the House and absolutely lost the Senate because they shut the government down. We were still talking about that in November, but then the, the levers started to shift because of the problems with Obamacare and because the government had been reopened. There's a whole lot of calendar between now and November. There is a long time for other things to pop up in the news and for this, this vision of Republicans as just being obstructionist to absolutely stick. And Republicans are going to keep hammering them month after month after month. Do something. Do something about immigration. Do something to create do, do you jobs. Think do Democrats, something. Dominic, were saying when the bill gets to the president's desk on the farm bill, right, they're going to pass it with the food stamps. The way they privately saying, damn, I thought we had them on this. Right. I thought they That's were That's exactly take the what's going on. The Democrats, are, I didn't mean to cut you off, yeah. but, but I, I fully agree with your assessment. The Democrats laid out the trap. They put the mouse trap out in terms of uh, unemployment, uh, food stamps, minimum, wage, it, too, minimum yeah. wage, issues that make Republicans look awful. And normally the Republicans go and they put their finger on the trap and pow. This time, Republicans, okay, let's look at it this way. When did, when Democrats, when Obamacare came out, the website, when did Republicans shine? They shined when they stayed in the back, <laughs> Just let it blow didn't comment, yeah. and, and, and let the president take the hit himself. If they do exactly that strategy, they will do very well but this you know, November. Jeannie, you, you know polls better than anybody, and that is, if you actually look at how much people like Republicans and their policies, yeah, the president's poll numbers have gone down, gone up a little bit, but they're still so un underwater here, below 50%. They poll worse than Democrats. They poll worse than the president. 
Are they reading the wrong press clippings here and believing that they're in a position of strength, or are they right? I think they're right, and here's why. You're absolutely right that Republicans' disapproval is about 80%. It is horrendous. But if you look at the president's approval rating in those states where you have GOP members who could mm -hmm. potentially pick up Senate seats or hold the Senate seats, he's at about 36%. And this is a midterm election. I mean, I think we have to remember this is not about the general public like we'll see in 2016 when it's a different story. This is about the base. And the base wants everybody to be united for the Republicans against against Obama and against Obamacare. That's what gets out the base. They start talking about immigration reform, yeah. that divides the base. They're not gonna get them out there. And the Democrats have to get their base out there. That's why we saw in the State of the Union, the president speaking directly to women, speaking directly to students and young people that he thinks he can get out for his base. This is about getting the base out. I would agree with you, Andrew, because I'm a nice person. Politely. And politely. politely. If this was about the general public, but this is about the base, and Republicans have a winning strategy when you're talking about the GOP base. They have no incentive to divide the Republican Party right now because it's not, things can come up, that's certain. I agree with you, we don't know. But at this point, strategically, they're making the right move. Well, and of course, everybody who's looking to get reelected as a Republican in Washington right now is terrified of the potential for a primary challenge. Mm -hmm. So that happens to f the play along into this uh, strategy as well. I don't want to leave myself open to an attack from the right that I was supporting amnesty for immigrants. Yeah, uh, and, and I think if we listen carefully to what Boehner said, by the way, yesterday, he didn't say it's not going to happen. He said he thinks it's going to be difficult. So we may, to Andrew's point, see them walk this back after the primary season if Mitch McConnell and Cornyn uh, uh, and these other people you know, you are Mitch able McConnell. to... He's losing in a poll by four points to a Democrat, okay? And he's got a primary fight in his hands. Because it's I've, a lovely woman. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. But I've seen a few races where it's, you scratch your head and you say, wait a minute. Is this an anti-incumbency wave we're talking about? Or is this an anti-Obama wave that we've got going on maybe in the fall? I know it's early, it's February, but uh, do we really know what's going on in the electorate's head right now? Because they're sick of Washington, period. I mean, I think it's early. We saw the Washington Post come out today, 50, you know, there's a 54% chance that Republicans can take the Senate. Yeah. I mean, it's still early. But that said, I mean, part of Mitch McConnell's problem now is he's being primaried by the right. Once he's able to secure his base, he may, you know, mm -hmm. come up in those polls. I mean, but I agree with you, it's still early. We right. don't know what's going to happen. But historically... And there's also a chance, believe it or not, that Obamacare actually gets more popular between now and November. I think it very well will. I mean, I think it, it could well actually might. happen. After, <laughs> but I'm sorry, after that CBO report and the jobs issue but you and... you the CBO, and I don't want to take the time away from my guests, but... Also the choice. Also the choice Depends on who you, you talk to. It's either good news for Obamacare, the CBO report, or it's bad news, there is no way the that you. There is no way that report is good news for Obamacare. Oh, whoa. I know, whoa. I whoa. Whoa. And there's no way that Wall Street Journal report about the lack of choice of primary care physicians and medical facilities is a good idea. Oh, that's absolutely true. You can spin that as you want. There is no it, way. It's not spinning. Two but million law jobs lost is a care, good idea. A smoke bomb. Yeah, yeah. It's, Do you think the, the... By the way, you know she's been doing TV long enough where she knows she waits the last... Sorry. Okay, we got to Wait the last 20 <laughs> seconds. Get the last word in before the break here. You win. All right. Thank Coming you. up next here, let the games begin. Well, the Olympics underway in Sochi, but there's already been a terror scare and a slew of other problems and worries. We're going to get the take of a man who helped cover 10 different Olympics for his perspective. That's straight ahead.